Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Monday night Bible study. Tonight, we are in John chapter number 14. Once again, that is John chapter number 14. Is there anyone that has any prayer requests before we get started? Any prayer requests? Yes, I do. Go ahead, uh, Sister Tatine. Okay, the question that I have is, how can we avoid a troubled heart, and how can we fix that? Okay, we'll we'll deal with that when the study starts, but right now we're taking prayer requests. Okay. Any prayer requests? Go ahead, Brother Valier. Thank you, my brother. Um, again, uh, just for prayers for my wife and I and uh, our little grandbaby who's not feeling well. Uh, and also, I want to uh, ask for prayer for uh, our sister uh, Hernandez, and uh, eventually they're going to make decisions, her and her family, they'll be maybe making a trip out to uh, the states, and we're looking forward to having them for a while when they uh, decide they're coming. So if you would all keep them in prayer for God to lead their hearts to make decisions, whether they will be able to come to the states and, and visit for some time. All right, my brother, is there anyone else that has any prayer requests? Um, yeah, keep my keep my family in prayer. Uh the bug is coming around. So I'm 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 the sole survivor right now, but um my household is pretty has been hit pretty bad. Uh most definitely, my brother. I'm also ask you all to pray for uh brother Robinson in Chicago. I just got a text message from him and um he's suffering from some migraine headaches at this time. So pray for that brother and his health. Do we have anyone else that has any prayer requests before we get started? Yeah, I'd like to uh, request prayer for me and my wife, Denise. We're uh, going to be traveling down to Miami for the holidays, and I want to uh, request traveling grace. Yes, sir, my brother. Do we have anyone else? Anyone else? All right, if that's all our prayer requests, I'm going to ask Brother Claude, my brother, if you don't mind, would you please open us up with a word of prayer? Yes, I will. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you at this time as humble as we know how. We come to render honors and grace to your magnificent and holy name, Father. Father, we come to ask your blessings on our family here, our church family. We ask Heavenly Father to be with our brothers that are traveling. Our, we ask you to be with our brothers who wives are sick. We ask our folks, we ask you to be with our sisters that will be traveling, that they may come and find the states much like they think it would be. Oh, Father, we know that you know our needs and you know our wishes before we even approach your throne to ask you. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you will hear the needs of all of us because all of us have some needs that we ask of you. Maybe physical, maybe mentally, financially, Father. But you know your children's needs. And you will render to them the things that they need at the time that they need them, Father. And we, we thank you for that. We thank you for the blessing that you've sent us. Little ones, big ones, we thank you. We thank you most of all, Father, for your son who came and shared his precious blood that we might have a right to the tree of life, Father, that we may and we may depart from this planet, that we will be able to meet you face to face and give you honors and praises for taking care of us for these many years. Father, we, we ask you to be with this country, to be with the leaders, that you will guide them in the right places and the right manners and the right times, Father. We ask you to be with all these war-torn countries now, Father. 
that they all need your grace. They need your praise. You need your help, Father. Oh, Father, we, we thank you so much. And we ask, Father, that you be with everyone on this Zoom program tonight. Be with the teacher tonight because he has studied and has read it himself. And we may receive your word, that we may understand your word, that we may use your word, that we may take your word and spread it among our friends, our loved ones, that they too might want to inherit this wonderful life that you prepared for us, Father. Father, we, we thank you. We thank you so much for loving us and not wanting to lose any of us. We thank you, Father. And this is our prayer, that through the remainder of this week, that we will be able to pray to render honors to your name, and that your sun may shine through us, Father. This is our prayer. In your son's name, we, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for that Amen. wonderful Amen. Prayer, God. Um, just before we get started, I just want to say something real quick. I just want to thank God, give him all praise, glory, and honor for the work that our brethren has been doing. Uh, Brother Stevenson, Brother Coffee, Brother Joyce, uh, praise God for you brothers and praise God for those that have obeyed the gospel. And just want to ask you all to keep our new brethren in, in prayer, you know, that they stay strong, faithful, and obedient to the things of God. So I just wanted to say that before we get started. Once again, everyone, we are in John chapter number 14. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Brother Kennedy. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Can y'all hear me? All right. Now, <laughs> I'm so grateful and thankful to be uh, called upon to teach this. Uh, John chapter 14 is a, a very powerful chapter. Um, you know, John chapter 13 uh, started out with uh, service where uh, where Jesus was washing the feet of his uh, of his disciples. Then he started talking to them about betrayal. Uh, he started talking to them about love. And then he went into even talking about how Peter was going to deny him, you know, and all of that led us to John chapter uh, 14 because chapter 14 deals with, with three to four main things. There's a lot of things that it deals with, but there's three conclusions that I draw from chapter 14. Um, it, 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 is, it is a reassurance of not letting your hearts be troubled and we get an understanding why. It is a great understanding about relationship and you also find out straight off the bat who Jesus is. And I'm going to start reading the first five verses because uh, I, I, I love the, the, the introduction. We've been talking about who Jesus is for the, for the longest, especially since we started uh, John chapter four, uh, John, the book of John. Um, but John chapter 14 kind of goes right back into the, the beginning of how we were talking about Jesus and we were getting to understand that Jesus is deity. And I believe in the very first couple of verses, Jesus announces his deity again. And in verse one, Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believed in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Now, I want you to understand off the off the, off the bat, Jesus is affirming his deity. He places himself equal to the father. Now, we know that Jesus is not the father and we know that he is not above the father, but he is letting you know off the bat that 
if you believe in God, he said, believe in me also. The only, the only way that you can put yourself in a position to tell somebody that if you believe in God, this, 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 the creator, the th what we know of, the father, uh, something that, that they have, uh, have had an understanding from the beginning of time, God, you know, the, the, the one who created the world, they, they have an understanding of, of, of deity from a standpoint of God, the father. But Jesus is saying, if you believe in that, if you believe in he, I want you to believe in me also. That automatically lets you know Jesus's place in the hierarchy. Jesus is saying that if you believe in God, the father, please believe in me as well. Also, I want you to I want I want I want to break this down real quick. I want to go to uh, one first John. Uh, chapter five and verse seven, because I think I believe it draws a, a a special conclusion or an addition to that. When we we know in in, in first John, it tells us uh, in John chapter one, it tells us in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Right. So it says the word was with God and the word was God. And that that meaning that Jesus was with God and he is God. A lot of people get confused by that. They can't understand that, that Jesus is introducing himself, that, that the introduction of Jesus is being introduced from a deity standpoint, letting you know that he is the son of God. It tells us later on in that chapter, it tells us that the word became flesh. It didn't say, and God became flesh. It said the word became flesh. So Jesus uh, 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 became flesh at that particular moment. But if you go to 1 John chapter 5, and then you and, and it's very, very powerful and 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 well known um scriptures. And then you go to verse seven, it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Now, I I, I want you to remember that. I want you to remember first John 5 7, because we're gonna come back to it. But I need you to understand that it tells us that there are three that bear records in heaven. It says the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Now, uh, the beginning of John, when we read, uh, uh, you know, when we very first started this chapter, it tells us, it says in John chapter one, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If you drop down to verse 14, it says, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory and the glory of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. Now, when you read into that and then you start reading uh, uh, and, and you start reading the very first uh, 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 verse in, in, in John chapter 14, and, and, and you understand that Jesus has just laid the foundations to let us know that he is equal with the father. What does it mean to be equal with the father? They, they are, they are one. They are on the same mindset. They have the same approach onto uh, of everything that, that, that it is that we need to go, do from a godly standpoint, from a, from a, uh, being a, a, a Christian standpoint, which is a direction that we're heading into on, on who we must follow, whose authority we're under. And all of this, we're going to get a full understanding in this chapter. Uh, this is why I said this chapter is extremely um, powerful. Then but I want you to remember, I want you to hold to your head, 1 John 5 and 7, because we're going to go back to that. Verse 2, he starts saying, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I would go to prepare a place for you. Now, uh, you know, we, we sing this song, Mansion, Robe, and Crown. I want a mansion, robe, and crown. And, you know, everybody wants a mansion, robe, and crown. But I want you to understand that this is not something physical that you're going to have. You're not you're not going to have a mansion and 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 be able to store things in it. It's nothing physical. This is a, a spiritual example that 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 we're going to have. It's I, I look at it more like residency or 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 a dwelling place. You know what you're having when when Jesus said He is going to prepare a mansion. 
He's, he's going to prepare a place where we can dwell, where we can come and, and be received. Now, the song is more of a, is a, is more of a, a to, for us to get an understanding and feel good about it. But I want you to understand because a lot of people, they, you know, they think it's, it's, it's like a 40 acres in a mule type of thing where you, you're, you're going to get a whole bunch of things and you're going to be able to store a bed and plasma TV and you're going to be watching all your favorite sports TV shows and all. That's not the purpose of making it to heaven. Okay. It's, it's, it's about getting in, but once you're in there, all of that uh, tangible stuff goes away. It's about having your place um, in heaven. You know, verse three talks about, and it says, and if I go, I prepare a place for you. And he says, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. Now, you know, Jesus, Jesus, when Jesus says this, right, you know, Jesus is talking about, coming back to get him get us himself you know but 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 here's the catch uh uh to that you know when jesus talks about coming back to get to uh get him himself that's a personal uh 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 a thing that he's doing he personally is coming back to get us but there's something that we have to do on this side of the living in order to make sure that when he comes back we can he can personally get us. That means you have to personally get to know Jesus now. You have to start building your relationship with him now. If not, unfortunately, you won't be able to put yourself in a position to be able to be uh, received by the Savior because you don't have that relationship. For him to say that he is coming back to get us himself, that means he is coming back for a selective few uh, 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 individuals. He's not just coming back for everybody. Uh, unfortunately, you know, and and I, I want I think this is very interesting because in verse four and verse five, um, you know, he says that and whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. So he's telling them that, you know, the way. But then if you look at Thomas response, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest and how can we know the way now? These are individuals who have been uh, traveling with Jesus um, throughout his ministry here on earth, you know, and and, and Jesus said that uh, we know the way. Um, now, unfortunately, uh, this 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 way isn't a way that you can uh, you, you can you can find on your Google, your Google apps or your 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 Apple maps for direction. This isn't one of those that, you know, here today, you know, just about any place you want to go. Um, in this world, you're able to ask, you know, Siri, or you can ask uh, Jeeves or whoever else you want to ask for for directions. Um, this is not one of those destinations that 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 the that Google or Jeeves or Siri will be able to direct you to. And you know, when Jesus tells them that 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 you know the way, he's telling them this because he has been planting seeds this entire time, and. A lot of stuff is going to be made known to them here in a little bit when he starts talking about him departing and who is getting ready to take his take his place. That's going to allow them to be able to tap into the things that they need to know. But it's no different than for us today. You know, we 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 have an opportunity every single day uh, to show our our worship and our appreciation for Christ. And how we do so, I've heard, I heard this said before, you know, there's the gospel is broken into what you need to do to get in and then what you need to do to stay in. You know, we always focus on the, you know, the hear the word, believe, repent, confession, all of that, you know, baptism. We focus on that, which is which is extremely powerful, but that's not the end of the gospel. Now, what you need to do to stay in is just as important. Um uh, I just oh, just coming off the top of my head, um, you know, there, you know, the scripture that talks about um, it is better for them who have who have uh, who have who who did not receive the word than those who have received the words and departed from it, um, because having access and knowledge to the information and, and then doing nothing with it is more detrimental than those who have no knowledge of what it is that they're doing. So for us that have access to the truth and we know the truth and we're in right now the kingdom to to not put yourself in a position to stay in the kingdom is is almost embarrassing 
You know, we 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 become one of those people that on that day when he said, uh, many will say, Lord, haven't we done all these miraculous works and cast out demons and depart from me, you workers of iniquity, uh, because you had there's something that you have to do to stay in the faith. Um, before I go on to the rest, um, I'm going to leave it, open it up for any um, questions at this time. Any questions uh, or comments? What's the difference? And in, in, in this might be off topic. So we're we're in John 14, right? Yes, sir. What's John to 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. Okay, your question was, what is the difference between John? Yeah. The, the book. So the book of John is, 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 so I'm, I'm going to break it down um, in this, in this fashion. So the gospel of Jesus Christ, the, 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 the story of Jesus, um, we, we, we have it from four different perspectives. Um, there are four individuals um, that, that took an account, the Holy Spirit inspired them to um, present the gospel of Jesus Christ from four different perspectives. Um, the way I look at it is uh, you have um, four different writers. You have, uh, uh, you have a tax collector, you have a, a, a lawyer, you know, you have, you know, someone who is uh, who has a, um, a, a close relationship to Christ. Um, it's just four different perspective of it. That's what John, the book of John is uh, the gospel, according to John, the way the Holy Spirit inspired him to write it. Now, when you go over to uh, first John and second John and third John, now these are these are uh, um, parts in the Bible that that and and one of these brothers can can you know can jump in and, and give you more information but at this point these are um it, uh, epistles that 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 is being written by John at this point you know and what John at this part is start doing is he's giving testimonies and he is he is he is giving instructions on 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 what the church are supposed to be doing at this particular time we have you know he, he he's talk, talking about beware of, of of seducers they're letting us know about you know as we are children of, of god how we're supposed to carry ourselves and conduct ourselves and how we are supposed to live as far as being godly but i see brother joy's got his hands up they're all uh uh john the baptist john first john second john third john oh no 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 not john the baptist now remember uh, John the Bap the baptizer, his his purpose, um, you know, uh, was fulfilled um, early in Jesus' ministry. Once you start looking at uh, from, um, uh, uh, you know, in the beginning. So John's purpose was to bring people to Christ. But once he once he. Once once he uh, once he uh, brought um, um once he baptized Jesus, um, he fell back. If you could recall, I don't know if you was on that study. Once he, um, uh, let me let me go to it. Uh, you know, what happened was after John baptized Jesus, um, he fell back and he said that I must fall back so that way he must be propelled. And remember, he was he was beheaded um, uh, uh, later on. Uh, he was also the one that was in jail and wanted, uh, you know, um, uh, he wanted uh, uh uh, his his disciples to go out to see um, if the person that that is actually doing all this miraculous thing, if it was Jesus that was doing it. Um, go ahead, Brother Joyce. Thank you. Hey, man, God bless you, brother. Great teaching. Uh, but uh, just to add to that, uh, the difference between uh, John and the Gospel of John and the epistles of first, second and third John. Of course, we know the gospel of John was John's accounts of the gospel of Jesus' life. That was his account, just like Matthew, Mark, and Luke. When you get into 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, those are epistles, just like Paul. Epistle simply means letter. It was his letter uh, to the church in that regard in 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, just like Paul's letter to the, uh, to the Ephesians or Paul's epistle to the Galatians. It's, in that light. So that was basically what first, second, and third John is the apostles John's letter uh to the church. Uh what makes it a difference distinction between his letter and his account of the actual gospel, like Mark, uh Ma Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Luke. I just wanted to add that. Brother Green. 
Yes, sir, my brother. Just to add a little bit more to it, uh, we know that John wrote the gospel, and like Brother uh, Joyce was saying, that you know that was the account that the Holy Ghost gave to him in order to write. And then we have uh, First, Second, and Third John, like he was saying that that was to the church. And let's not forget, he also wrote the Book of Revelations. So right. these are different letters that John wrote at different times as the Holy Ghost moved him to write. As we read in uh, Second Peter chapter one, he said, these holy men spake as the Holy Ghost moved them. So, and there's a difference because John the baptizer is not the same as John the apostle. You know, they're not the same person because like brother uh, Kennedy was stating that John the baptizer came to do a specific work that God had for him. And then, you know, John the Apostle was the one that actually walked with Christ and was an apostle. So they're two different people. I just wanted to add that as well. Appreciate that, um, brothers. Um, also, yeah, if you go to John chapter eight, you can start uh, uh, reading a little bit about it. But um, like these brothers already said, um, they they are two different um, people. Um, one is one was one is the apostle, and the other one, the baptizer, is the one that was preaching about uh repentance and baptizing folks but um once he uh baptized jesus he fell back and allowed uh um and jesus um um went forward and then shortly after that he he was um beheaded um but you can read about that um a little bit about that in john chapter eight any more questions Okay, now we're going to go uh, verse 6 through 10, and then I'm going to, um, then I'll start asking people to read. I wanted to read the first uh, uh, 10 verses. And verse 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffice us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The word that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Now, this is this is this is a uh, uh, in extremely important. John, uh, uh, you know, it's, it starts off by talking about, you know, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And you know, you know, this is this is uh, this is this is imperative because if you go to in John chapter thirteen, verse thirty six. Um, which is the chapter before you have, uh, uh, I'm going to read to you. Simon Peter said unto him, this is the very first, the, the chapter before 14. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whether thou goest, Jesus answered and said, whether I go, thou cannot follow me, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. So Jesus just told Peter that where he is going, he cannot follow. And he just told him though, in, in this very next verse, of John chapter 14 that we read, he says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So he is telling them, he just he just recently told them, he said that he's going to prepare a place for them. He said, I'm going to receive you myself. And he says, and whether I go, he said, you know, and you know, and you <laughs> know the and you know the way. So he's telling them that you know the way. But then he comes back and he tells them that 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 before he told them that the the way that I'm the way that I'm going, you cannot follow me. But he's telling them that I am the way. So this whole entire time, Peter is he, um, um, Jesus is telling his apostles, Jesus is telling his his disciples, he's telling his followers. He says, as long as you continue to follow me, that you will be heading in the right path. And in, in verse six, you know, Jesus says. You know, he is the way to the father. He's saying that he is the truth of the father and he is the life of the father. What Jesus is telling them, he is telling them that I am narrating the father's will. And as long as you continue to follow me, as long as you continue to trust in me, that that you will have access to the way. Now, in verse seven, 
He says, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. This is this is this is this is a relationship conversation talking. Jesus says, if you have a relationship with me, you have a relationship with the father. Jesus just described himself as a reflection of the father. He says, having a relationship with me is having a relationship with the father. Now, if we go to John chapter eight, uh, verse 12, Jesus said that he is the light of the world. Right. He says, I am the light of the world. That's what Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 12. In Matthew 5, 13 to 20, Jesus describes himself as the light of the world. Aren't we described as the light of the world? Also, Jesus describes himself as the way in verse 6. And the disciples, by the way, they were teaching were described the way as the way as well. If you go to Acts chapter 19 and 9, I want you to see this real quick. I want you to see this real quick. In Acts chapter 19, verse 9, this is, this is extremely interesting. So Jesus said, I am the way, right? He says, the truth and the life. No man coming unto the Father, but by me. Okay. And then if you go to Acts chapter 19 and verse 9, I want you to read, I want you to see this real quick. Acts chapter 19 and verse 9. Jesus says, but when divers, not Jesus, the Bible says, but when divers were hardened and believed not, but speck evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of um, Ty Tyrannus, right? Now, go to Acts 24 and verse 22. And there's, and there's, there's, there's many more as well. Acts 24 and 22. It says in Acts 24 and 22, and when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he deferred them and said, when Lysus, the chief captain, shall come, I will know the uttermost of your matter. Now, I bring that to, to, to the forefront for us to have an understanding that today we have a way that we show individuals, that we show people. Uh, you know, the, the, the doctrine that we, that we, that we preach, uh, the, the, the gospel that, that, that we uh, share with individuals is that way. Jesus says that he is the way. The way is what we're teaching, the things that we are instilling and pointing to people for them to uh, 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 bring themselves to Christ. That is that way. Uh, the, the apostles have told us, it says that, you know, if anyone preaches another doctrine, another way, another gospel, right? So when Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth and the life, again, he is saying that with a, from a relationship standpoint, I want you to get the understanding of this, from a relationship standpoint, he is saying that in order to get to God, you have to go through me, which means you have to follow the things that I have laid for us to, 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 to make it into to the, to, to the kingdom. Now, that way, that way is described as the teachings, the blueprint, the breadcrumbs, the, the, the gospel of Christ. If you go on and read in, 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 uh, in verse 9, Jesus said unto him, Have I been long with you, time with you, and yet has that not known me, Philip? He that have seen me have seen the Father. Once again, we have Philip here. What Philip is trying to do is Philip is doing nothing differently than some of the at this point, some of the uh, the Pharisees or the Sadducees, everybody wanted to see some sort of sign. And, and Jesus is saying to him, all this time that I've been with you and you want proof of something tangible. And, 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 and what's interesting is that no one can physically see God the Father, but only through the Son can you see him, right? So in John, in John chapter 14, I want you to go, I want you to go to John chapter 14. Actually, you know, let's go to John chapter one. We're going to go back to John chapter one. This is a lot of this stuff, man, is extremely interesting. When you start, you start reading and you start putting yourself and you're bouncing them upon description. It seems like, like, like things are like, it's just like gets revealed more and more, the more you read into it. 
But in John chapter one and verse 14, he says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. When you drop down to number verse number 18, it says, no man has seen God at any time, the only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, he hath declared unto him. Again, nobody has seen God. Nobody can see God. The only way they could see God back then was through Jesus. The only way we can see God today is through Jesus. How do we see Jesus? By believing in his word. The works of God is to believe on him who he has sent. That is the only way we have an opportunity to see Jesus. This is why it's so hard for a lot of our brothers today to see who Jesus is, is because they refuse to see Jesus. They want to see the father, but not see the son. And because they don't see the son, it blocks them their ability to see who the father really is. They, 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 you, you start uh, messing up the, the, the relationship. Jesus has never said and has never put himself in a position, and we're going to see more of it um, later on in these verses where he is the father or put himself in, in any way, shape, or form to say that he is the father. He's always announced himself as the son, but if you don't put yourself in a position to see that by believing in the things that he said, it denies you the ability to see the father. Brother Coffee. Yes, I just wanted to add, uh, brother, uh, brother Kennedy, verse eighteen, and it's and it's unfortunate that it's, the word says, "And no man has seen God at any time." And this new thing now that you see, you know, we know the internet can be, you know, a bad place to to try to understand who God is if it's not rightly divided. This new thing now is you have these individuals saying they have gone to hell, they've seen hell, and they've also seen heaven. Well, if that be the case, then you if you took a visit to heaven, then that means you've seen the Father, which means that the scriptures are wrong. And I mean, all I'm, I don't know, this is, you know, you get on this, I get on this thing sometimes, it's just so sad and pitiful that people say this. And once they say it, you get hundreds of, of comments saying, oh, yeah, I just had this thing. Well, I tell you, it's just so it's just so thankful to know the truth as I was sharing something with Brother Henry on 6.30 Sunday morning. Thanks for answering my question. But it's just amazing when you see the truth and when God, as, you, as you're teaching, as God shows you who his son is, it's amazing what the ignorance that I once had when, it, when I was just lost. That's my comment. I don't want to keep going. No, amen. Amen. And look, and, and, and before, before Brother Green goes, if you go to John chapter 10, uh, in John chapter 10, verses 29 and 30, he says, my father, which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father him. He says, I and my father are one. They go that oneness again that we keep, you know, hearing, you know, we just read to you. I read to you earlier that um, first John five and seven, where there are three that bear records in heaven, the, the father, the word and, and the Holy Ghost. And they are one. Okay. That, you know, him and his father are one. You know, he just put himself in, in the beginning of John chapter 14. He says that, uh, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. So he's, he, Jesus, all Jesus is, is almost a shame. It's like, the John is writing it in a way where he's almost begging people to say, to understand who Jesus is. He is almost like, he's like, Hey man, what are y'all doing? Look, Jesus is the son of God. Like this is deity walking with us, you know, like stop search. It's, it's almost like people want to be smarter than them. You know, it's like, I got to be smarter than myself. And I got to prove to you that the scriptures are saying something more than what the scripture is saying. It, huh? Go, go ahead, brother green. Yeah, my brother, I was just also thinking um, with the comments that were being made, you know, that people are, you know, they can't see Jesus because they want to say that, you know, God and Jesus is the same person. And I think they missed the understanding, like going back to verse number 10, when he says, believest thou not that I am in the Father. Just the same way when we obey the gospel, we get the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, so the Holy Ghost is in us. 
And I think that's where uh, uh, confusion come in at. They don't understand what uh, the scriptures are saying when, you know, Jesus is telling them, I'm in the Father. Not that I am the Father, but I'm in the Father and he's in me. You know, so I just want to share that, my brother. Amen. And we're going to get into some of that here in a little bit as well. Um, Sister Denise, if you're able, can you read um, verses 11 uh, through 15, please? 11 through 15. Oh, yes, I can. Thank you. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the Father. And whatsoever ye, ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. Thank you for that, um, sister. It's, 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 again, I, I, I said this just a minute ago. It's, it is amazing. It almost seems as if, as if John is, is almost trying to like beg people to understand who Jesus is. It's like, you know, he's like, he's trying to tell you like, Hey, don't, don't, don't think about this harder than what it really is. You know, this is as simple as, as possible. You know, the, the, the whole purpose of Jesus life is about the will of the father. He, all Jesus is doing is, is, is God is the father's will. And when you when you look at uh, verse, you know, 11 and 12, especially when he starts off, he says, believe me that I'm in the father and the father in me or else believe me for the very work's sake. Like you see the things that I've done, you know, and you've you've heard and you've read about so many other prophets and so many other people that's come before me that that has been for telling you about all these miraculous things that's getting ready to come. And, you know, but none of them have been able to do the works that I've done. You know, believe me for the work sakes, you know, that, that like, you have the scriptures, you have access to the scriptures. Now check out my works. You know, I'm here healing people. I'm take blind, spitting on people's eyes. I don't know. Like, like, like Brother Stevenson said before, I don't know how many people would let somebody spit in their eyes. But if you but if I'm blind and it's going to help me, you know, hey, do what you got to do. You know, I mean, he's doing all these raising people from the dead. Believe me by my works. And then he comes in verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you. He that believe on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the Father. Now, I found that uh, to be extremely interesting, because first, first, I want you to go to John 6, 2, 9. And, and, and I, and I, 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 I kind of said this earlier, but, you know, if, 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 if you're ever to be asked, in John 6, 2, 9, it gives it to you. It tells you what the work of the Father is. You know, what is the whole works of the Father? You know, now a lot of that entails some things, but in John 6, 29, it says, Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God, that you believe on him who he has sent. Now, to believe on he who he has sent would be in telling what? Believe in everything that Jesus said. So if Jesus says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. That is to believe that is the work of God. If it's, you know, uh, uh, to be born again is if, if it's to be born of water and spirit, that if you don't do that, you will not enter the kingdom of God. That is believing. See, you can't isolate what you want to believe. And because of your own personal circumstances or situations, choose or what based on what you've been taught, uh, it, it, it Brother brother Ozan said this in one of the uh, YouTube videos. If if I can read you wrong, then you're wrong. And ever since I heard him say that, I, I've been I, boy. I hope he don't come back for me because I've been I've been saying that left and right. Boy, if you can read you, if I can read you wrong, you are wrong. If the Bible says something, and the Bible is our authority concerning spiritual matters, then we have to stand firm on what the Bible is saying. So if the work of God is to believe on Him who he has sent. And then in John chapter 14, when we read verse uh, uh, 12 again, and it says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. What does that mean? 
So the works that now we know that Jesus is not talking about the things that he personally did, right? All the we ain't finna be raising nobody from the dead, right? Not 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 in 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 the way he did. You know, now we 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 are advocates, we we are tools being used to spiritually awake somebody from the dead, right? But we are not physically waking nobody up from the dead. But there are some works that we're going to be doing. And he said, believe on me, the works that I do, he do also. And greater work than these shall he do because I go unto my father. So Jesus right here is talking to his apostles, his, his apostles. He's telling them, look, the things that I'm doing, he says, look, I'm getting ready to go to my father. And you are about to do some greater stuff. Because you're about to be adding that that whole statement that he made that about him coming back and receiving people himself. That is what he is preparing his apostles for. I see Sister uh, Titanine, um, your hands is raised. Go ahead, Sister. You got a question? Yes, sir. I do have a question. <clears throat> um, who had preached the gospel? Was it John or Jesus the prophet? Which one? Did you, uh, Jesus, well, so who had preached the gospel? Yes. So the very first gospel that was preached was Peter, and that was in Acts chapter 2. Um, in Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, uh, G, uh, Peter preached the very first um, gospel based on the confession that he uh that he made to Jesus Christ, that he was the Christ. And, 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 and Jesus said, uh, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my father, which is in heaven. Um, and he told them that upon that confession that he was going to build his church and the gates of hell was not going to be, uh, was not going to prevail against it. And then he told Peter that he was going to give him the keys to the kingdom. And, um, and then that is why you see in Acts chapter two on the day of Pentecost, you see uh, Peter preaching the very first sermon, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, uh, I don't know if that answered your question. Now, before that, what you have is you have the gospel being told from, from four different perspectives, four different writers. The Holy Spirit is inspiring them to uh, tell the gospel from four different points of views. Um, did I ask your question? Yes, that answered my question. All right. Thank you. Can you please mute your mic? Thank you very much. Um, also, uh, so again, and, and then let's go to um, um, verse 13. And he says, and whatsoever ye shall ask, ask in my name that will I do that my father may be glorified in the son. Now, I want you to understand this, right? <laughs> because this is the we getting into scriptures that are that gets taken completely out of context. You know, people, hey, if you, anything that, you know, you know, and whatsoever you ask, just ask it in Jesus' name and he will do it. You know, that, you know, but they they, they completely miss the part that the father may be glorified in the son. So what, what, what he's talking about, he's not talking about just, you know, anything being asked. If you recall, uh, uh, Paul asked for, for thorns to be removed from his, from his, from his side. The flesh, right? If you go to Second Corinthians twelve nine, Paul wanted his 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 thorn to be removed. He asked, actually, he asked three times, and he, the only response that he had received was, "What my grace is sufficient," right? So just because you ask something doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to receive it. What is the purpose of what it is that you're asking? He says, "Anything that you ask in my name," right? That is talking about doing the works of God. If your heart and what you're doing is for the purpose of what God wants you to do. If you ask for it in Jesus' name, again, you have to ask for it in Jesus' name. Um, Jesus is saying that the Father may be glorified in through the Son. That, that, that is a way for it to be asked. And he says in verse 14, he said, and if you should ask anything in my name, I would do it. It's, I find it interesting that, that he brought that back around. You know, he said it twice, right? In verse 13, he says, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. But the, again, the key thing is that the father may be glorified in the son. Then verse 14, he comes back and he says, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Verse 15, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Again, keeping Jesus commandments. These are things that Jesus told us to do. Remember, I, I spoke about there are things that you have to do to get in the kingdom. And there are things that you have to do to stay in the kingdom. And some of those things that we have to do to stay in the kingdom are just as important as the things that you needed to do to get in the kingdom. 
because it's 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 two part. You can't isolate one or the other. At this per at this time, I'm open up for any questions. Hey, brother Kennedy, great study, uh, my brother. So far, man, this is a lot of meat uh, that you're giving us, uh, my brother. Uh, you know, I want to make a point too, going back to chapter thirteen, if I could, just real quickly. Peter said to him, Lord. Why can't I follow you now? 1337. He says, I will lay down my life uh, for your sake. But prior to Peter making that statement back in 36, he said, where you go, uh, where I go, you cannot follow me, Jesus tells him now, but you're going to follow me afterwards. And so what, 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 what John is showing us here is it is important, brothers and sisters, that Jesus go to the cross to die for our sins. We, we, we that that is a that is necessary for us to be able to follow Jesus, uh, that he go to the cross and that he die for us. Remember, before before he said, Jesus says what he says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. He's making reference to once he leaves here and goes to his father. Remember, now he's our high priest. See, because remember when Jesus teaching on earth, they asked, Lord, teach us how to pray. All he said, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. He tell them that's how you pray then. But it's going to be different now. Once Jesus goes to the cross, he now changes the law. He now becomes the high priest. And you and I now have the spirit of God, which is now what makes us be able to do greater works than, than Jesus has done in that sense. Uh, because we're spiritually now alive. Uh, we have the gospel in its completed form. It's just not to Judea, it's to Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world. And so because we have the gospel in its full accomplishment, the gospel now will start in Jerusalem and now to go to the end of the world. And that's what he's count that's what he's teaching us here in this in this particular text. But I have to go home first. I have to go to the Father first. And once I go to the Father, you all will do greater works than, than what I've been doing. But keep this in mind. If you love me, you got to keep my commandments. And that's the idea. And that applies to all of us uh, even today. And so what we ever we ask uh, in his name, I mean, and get this, as Brother Kennedy's already said, it's really according to his will. John will say that in 1 John 5, 14. Anything we ask according to his will, he answers. And that ought to be our desire any, anyway when we pray. Uh, to God is to pray and ask him for things, but only if it's according to his will. And he said, if it's according to his will, if it's in line with God's will, then we will get whatever we're asking for. And he's going to notice verse six, and he's going to pray the father. And, and and so Jesus will be having a, he'll be back in his glorified state with his father, but this can't happen until after he dies, buried, uh, and he rises from the dead and go to, go to heaven. Thank you for that, Brother Steven Sidney. Brother Joyce, can you read verses 16 through 21, please? Yes, sir. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Did you say 21, brother? Yes. Okay, he that... He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Thank you for that, brother. Man, these are, these those, those verses are uh, some very beautiful and powerful verses. Um, you know, first starting out, and and I had to, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure many have caught this, but this actually caught my eye. You know, when he says that I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that, that as as simple as that is, that was that was a lot for me because, you know, one that just showed us that God gave us Jesus. You know, he he gave us Jesus and he said and he's and, and Jesus is sitting here saying that he's praying to the father and he's going to give another 
So Jesus himself was a comforter while he was here on this world walking. He was a comforter. And he's saying that now he's going to, because Jesus is getting ready to leave. This is all preparation. And he's saying, look, I'm going to pray to the father. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. He's, I'm going to pray to him and he's going to send you another comforter and that he may abide with you forever. I thought that that was um, beautiful. And I thought that that was profound because um, um, it lets us know um, the, the full design and the full plan. Again, I read to you here in one, five and seven, right? There are three that bear records in heaven, the father, the word, uh, and the Holy Spirit. Um, Brother Coffee, I see you got your hands up. Just, just real quick, because what you just read in, in verse number 16 ties in big time with chapter 16 when it talks about the comforter. So what you're reading now, brother, you can almost preach the next three chapters and you will be right in line with just one topic and so right. it, 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 you, you're doing a great job. Thank you, brother. I thank you for that, brother. And then in verse 17, he says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Again, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be with you. I, I thought that that was interested as well. You know, uh, you know, when, when, when you when you sit in here, he's, you know, the spirit is called the spirit of truth, uh, um, you know, and, and, and you know, we're going to we're going to read a little bit more um, into it here in a little bit. And I don't want to kind of get ahead of myself, um, but with the spirit being known as the spirit of, of, of truth, meaning that we got to. So we understand that when we obey the gospel, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That is that is what we get. It doesn't give us the ability to perform any miraculous works, but we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And what the spirit is going to do is going to guide us to the truth. If we stay in this book. Right. And regardless on who it is that you're listening to day and night, it doesn't matter if you if you on the on the Wilson Road broadcast, listening on the YouTube. It doesn't matter if you on this uh, uh, a Bible study or if you at your local area worshiping and, and you listening to somebody preach Jesus. You supposed to bounce it off of this. Sanctify them in thy truth. Thy word is truth. And if the word is truth, the, the, the spirit of truth is going to guide you to the truth. And the moment you start searching the scriptures and you start, you know, listening to what folks are saying and you start bouncing them off of what the Bible says, it is it's gonna it's gonna tell on itself because the Bible isn't gonna lie, but a man will, a woman will. So when 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 I look at this, I'm looking at this and you know this you know to me this is this is this is speaking to me because it's telling me you know that. Me being me having the Holy Spirit inside of me, just like everybody that obeyed the gospel that's on this um Zoom session tonight has um has the Holy Spirit in them in them. And the more and more you read into th this this book, this Bible is is going to guide you to the truth. It's going to guide you to the knowledge. It's going to pour into you because you're searching. You 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 you're 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 putting yourself in a position to seek out. You know, and then it says because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. It's talking about the world that can't receive it because see the word can't because the world can't accept Jesus and they can't see Jesus. They won't be able to get access to the truth. This is why earlier when I spoke and I, and I, I, I talked about, you know, Jesus is the way and 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 Jesus being the way and Jesus is the light. Right. We are described as the light. And as long as we're sticking to this book, chapter and verse and we teaching people about Jesus we are teaching them and showing them the way. Um, so we're guiding them to the truth, which helps them um, have access to the Holy Spirit by, by them. Be, of course, they have to do um, their part by being pricked and, and, and believing in the things that is said. Brother Green, I see your hands up. Yeah. Yes, sir, my brother, a uh, great teaching. Something just really jumped out at me with the comments that you were just making about the belief. And then I was thinking about the earlier scripture that we just read about Thomas asking Jesus to show him the father. And then when uh, you went to John 1 and 18, where it said, no man has seen the father, which really makes that scripture jumps out because the same way they had problem with belief, 
because they were looking for the father. They want to see the father the same way they're having problems with belief when it comes to the Holy Ghost because they can't see him either. And it's like, you know, people can't visually see something, then they find it hard to believe, you know, and, and that's why I understand the scripture when it says we walk by faith and not by sight because they're busy wanting to see something instead of just having a faith. Because I also think about what Jesus said uh, when he was talking about the prophets. They didn't live to see these things, you know, but we read them today. And those that was there at those times seen these things, but yet they still had faith, you know? So that just really jumped a lot of stuff out at me when you said that, and which coincides with that scripture that, you know, it's hard for them to have faith in what the spirit will do because they can't see him the same way they couldn't see the father. And that's all I have, my brother. Amen. Brother Stevenson. Yeah, Brother Green, that, and, and good, good lesson, Brother uh, Kennedy. And, and, you know, that's why without faith, Brother Sister, it's impossible to please God. And we got, we got to get that. And that's why Jesus asked that question. Believe is thou not that I'm in the Father and the Father in me in John 14, verse 10. Because if you don't believe that, brothers and sisters, you don't have faith in that, everything else dies. That, that's, that's really the idea. See, you know, one of the reasons the Hebrew writer, Hebrews 11, starts with, Here's something none of us ever seen. None of us on this earth seen. We None of us ever saw God create this world. None of us. Not one human being saw God create this world. But by faith. That's why he starts off with that. By faith, we believe that God created this world. That's it. It takes faith. I don't have to see it. I don't have to see God do it to believe and know that he did based upon what the word of God says. That's why Hebrews 11 and 1, now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And then he says in verse 3, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So if you don't believe that there's a God that created the heaven and earth, there's no hope for you. And there's nothing else we can say give you other than the word of God. If you don't believe the word of God, that the, the world was created by him, if you're an evolutionist, and you know, then that, that's just on you. And your lack of belief and faith in the word of God will cause you to miss a whole lot of other things. And, and I want to add this to this, this lesson too. I want to look at Luke chapter 10, if we could. And this goes right in line with why they can't see, brothers and sisters. We got to understand God knows the hearts of all of us. And in Luke chapter 10 and verse 21, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit. Now, Jesus is going to talk to the Father. He said, I thank you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, Luke 10, 21, that you have hid these things from the wise and the prudent. That's what God will do. If you think you're so wise, you think you're so smart, God will hide himself and his son from people seeing this. He said, and you have revealed them unto babes, Jesus says. Even so, Father, for so it is seen good in your sight. All things, Jesus says, are delivered to me, verse 22, of my Father. And no man knoweth who the Son is, but the Father, mm -hmm. and who the Father is, but the Son, Amen. and Amen. he to whom the Son will reveal him. And so the Son has revealed the uh, the Son has revealed the Father, and the Father has revealed the Son. That's exactly what's going on. And if you can't see that, it's because the Lord don't want you to see it because there's some unbelief, some some wickedness, and some evilness in your heart. You just won't believe. Yeah, it's, it's it's personal. It's personal goals. It's it's something that you trying to do, for, from your perspective, from your foxhole that you trying to do. So it has nothing to do with what God is trying to reveal or anything like that. Let me. I'm gonna read uh verse uh, 19 and 20, and then I'm gonna go. Um, I'm I'm gonna get to you, brother Coffee. Uh, verse 18, he says, "I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you." Then he comes back. He says, "Yet a little while, the world seeth me no more, but ye see me because I live." Ye shall live also. And, you know, when I saw that, you know, it, it brought to me the, the you know, that, the, you know, Jesus's death is was was almost a a, you know, we, we, we understand Peter denied him and he, he went away and all his for the most part, all the disciples, they scattered and, you know, they, they were confused and, you know, it, it, it stripped them of something. But when Jesus resurrected himself and, and then revealed himself to them that gave them life <laughs> because they know what they just saw. They know what, what, what they was witness of, 
And for them to be able to see him, we, we understand even, even then Thomas was still doubting. Thomas needed a little bit more. And, 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 and Jesus, you know, Jesus allowed Thomas to go ahead and get his poke on. And, you know, and then once he did that, then, you know, he told him, oh, ye a little faith. You know, he said, that's why he came and said, greater is he that have not seen and believe. Um, and, 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 and that's what I believe uh, verse uh, uh, 19 is talking about, where, where it talks about um, yet a little while. And the world seeth me no more, but ye see me because I live, ye shall live also. He, I, I believe that was him telling them like, look, you know, that was a, once I'm resurrected, that's going to give his disciples life. Um, and then verse 20, the last, um, at the, at that day, ye shall know, um, that I am in my father and ye in me and I in you. And, you know, this, again, this is that language of, you know, the father and me and me and you, you know, oftentimes people always want to say, because, you know, Jesus says he is in the father and the father is in him or some vice. They, people try to say that that's uh that's Jesus saying that he is the father. And it's like, OK, well, then if if that's the case, then I guess I'm Jesus because Jesus said he's going to be in. You know, he's saying he's going to be in them. So I guess they Jesus as well. You know, it, it just doesn't make no sense. This is why you can't stretch your arms out and try to reach for stuff that the Bible isn't telling you. The Bible is telling you everything that you need to know. Brother Coffee. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Kennedy. Uh, going back to uh, what Brother Henry was sharing in Luke chapter 10, you're, and you're correct because uh, what took place today when I was sharing the gospel, I was actually talking with the homeowner. And it didn't matter what question he asked, I gave him God's answer. And this, he's the type of brother that want to ask, he wants to ask every question that you can imagine, but yet don't want to believe the things that that, that the scripture are teaching. He know more about the Jehovah's Witness, the Muslims, the Methodists, the Baptists, the Catholics. I mean, this brother was all over the place. But again, while the gospel was being shared, it, the, the young lady overheard the conversation. Because she opened up her heart to the truth, then this gives her an opportunity to obey it. And that's exactly what takes place. As long as I was talking to the gentleman, it didn't matter what I shared with him as regarding God's word. He was just not going to accept it. He even accompanied us to the church and they still tried to teach him he was doing the same thing. Again, because you know, his heart, is, his, his heart is already made up that he is not going to believe what the scripture says. And he's more concerned about, you know, unfortunately, the traditions of men, as it teach, talk to, teaches us in Mark chapter 7, 7 and 8, that he must re refer to deal with his own self-righteousness or the righteousness of man instead of the commandments of God. But anyway, that's my, my comment. And, and thank you, Brother Henry, for going there. Brother Henry. Yeah, thank you, uh, Brother Kenny. Can I give you all one example of this just real quickly in Acts 16? And Brother says, let me say, and I said this the other time, I think we were on Zoom. If you're on this Zoom and you can hear me or you're listening to it, if you can see that there's a Father, a Son, and a Holy Spirit as three different persons, consider yourself blessed by God. I'm telling you, brother, that's not nothing you ought to be taking for granted. I ought to not be taking it for granted. If you and I can see and know that we know that there's a father and Jesus was a son before he became this earth and there's a Holy Spirit, God opened your heart so you could see him. And that's a blessing because everybody's not going to see this. If, if, if God let you and I see this, it's because he knows there's something in us where we're going to be honest about our lives and about having a relationship with him. But if that's why you and I don't get mad when people don't obey when we think they ought to obey. Our job, brothers, is just the plant and the water. God has to open the heart to give the increase. He's going to determine who's going to see him and his son, not you or I. So in Acts 16, real quickly, listen to verse 13. And on the Sabbath, we, uh, this is Paul now, went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted there. Now look at verse 14. This is what I want. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Tyatar, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart, now get this, the Lord opened. Now, I want you to get that, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attend under the things which was spoken of Paul, and when she was baptized. Y'all see that? She's a worshiper of God, but she's not worshiping right. She believes in God, but she don't know about the Son and what Jesus said she needed to be saved. So what the Father did, he allowed Paul to come with the message because she has a heart seeking for God, 
open up her heart and God said, okay, I'm going to let her see my son. And she's going to obey him. She's going to get baptized. And now she's a Christian. And this is how God works throughout history since the church was established. The church was established. Hey, amen. You know, a lot of people get confused about that, that, that heart being open. They, they look at that as that's the sign of a person being saved. And then the question, well, then if that's when the person is saved, when, what was the reason for baptism then? You know, what, 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 what would be that reason? I've had a conversation with somebody about that and they said, you know, well, no, you know, it was when the heart was being, when it was open. Go ahead, Brother yeah. Stevens. And, bro, and Brother and brother Kenny, what we have today, this is where our battle is. We have the Muslims who wants a God without a son. That's why they, they say they love God, but they don't want to listen to the son. Jesus was just a good man. Uh, he was just a prophet. So they want God, Allah, with no son. And unfortunately, we got people today in the church who want a son to be just God, to be the father. So we want a son with no father. That's that's the battle. So we got people like Jen O'Gina, am I right about it? That kind of fool. Like, hey, read, there's one God, just give me Deuteronomy 6, 4. There's that one God, that kind of foolishness. So, so, so he wants, <laughs> he wants a son with no father. So you got a, one people that kill the son, and then you got another group that kills the father, and that's what we deal with today. And we got to make sure we understand it. There's three, as Brother Kennedy read, First John five seven, in the Godhead, Father in the in heaven, Father, Word, Holy Ghost, three different entities. And I hope we're getting that tonight. I'm going to read uh 21 through uh through 25 uh, um He that hath my commandments and keepeth them he is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him Judas said unto him not Isocrat lord how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world Jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the father which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you being yet present with you. You know, and I find that I find that uh, uh, interesting, you know, one again. So this is this is. We have we have a little bit of a future talk here. So when you go into the uh he that hath my commandments, that's a little bit different from uh when he said it in verse 15 when he said, If ye love me, keep my commandments. He was talking to his apostle. I think I heard someone said it already, but yes, he was talking to his to them at that particular time. Those uh his his apostles, he was saying, he was talking to them, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you. But down here in verse 21, he's talking to us. He's talking to us. This is this is this is this is us. He said. He's talking in the, in, in the future. He's saying, he that keepeth my commandments, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he is that love me and he that loveth me shall be love of my father and I uh, will love him. You know, if you um, if you think about it, you know, this is this is this is talking to all the believers. This is this is at this point talking to all believers. Now, Judas comes and he answers him and he's saying, you know, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Now, I think verse 23 is in stream, man, it's, it's, it's really, really important. I want you, I'm going to read this again. And I'm going to read it slow. He says, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him. And he says, and we will come. He says, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Now I've been, I've been telling you about that first John five, seven, brother Stevenson just quoted it. You know, the father, the word and the spirit, the Holy ghost. And here you have the the we is talking about um, as as I look at this, this is talking about the father, son and the spirit. He already told him he's leaving them. He's bringing the comforter. So he introduced the concept of the comforter that's 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 that is coming. And then he says that um, that that this 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 part where he says, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him that's i think that that is that is profound right because he what he's saying when he's saying that that he's going to make an abode with you this is now when when this when when jesus dies and his resurrection 
and, and is resurrected and ascends up to heaven. What we now have is we now have the completion of that recent reconciliation back to God that we lost ever since the beginning. Ever since the beginning, when 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 Adam and Eve allow sin to come into this world and we lost that connection with God. If you really paid attention to God has always spoken to his people through prophets. It was always some type of representative. And then even when it was a uh, 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 time to worship him, there was a specific location or a specific place. And then there was even a representative, a chief priest or some type of individual that, 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 that was, that was, that was there. Now, God is saying, this is what Jesus is saying here. He is saying that in us, we are not that temple. We are not that place where we're going to have the ability to have that relationship in us. I think that that is so beautiful. Now, we've always, we, 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 we've never had this opportunity before. Since the beginning of time, since, since Adam and Eve uh, 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 allowed sin to come in, We've, we've always had advocates and other people that had to intercede Moses coming down. And, you know, it was always some type of representative. Uh, you know, the, you had the Pharisees, you had, you know, John. The, it was always somebody that somehow the what God's message was, 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 was being relayed to us. And now, because of this, Jesus says here that in, in, in verse 30, in, in verse 23, he says that as long as you love him, and you keep the words. That's 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 important. You love him and you keep his words. What are his words? We're we're reading them right now. From when we started in John, well, I mean, since I've been, you know, joining this these 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 sessions, we always in Matthew, and you know, we went from Matthew to Mark and Luke. Now we're in John. You know, you go to church on Sunday, you read, hoping you're reading at your own um, apparel while you're at home, not just waiting on Wednesday and Sundays and then on these sessions. These words are 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 what is if, if you keep those, the things that you're believing in those words, you know, if you keep those, Jesus saying that. That as far as that is concerned and the love of the father, he says we will come unto him and he said he is going to make his home in us with him with us that's beautiful now you now you have the opportunity to worship god in spirit and in truth and you worshiping god in spirit and in truth is something that you can do without having to have some chief representative you don't have to have no 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 local high priest do this for you you can now pray to god and as long as you keep his word and love him you know, you have your and look, this is this is why this is so important, you know, because now we're we're talking about we're talking about relationship. This is an intimate relationship that we have now with the father. This is an intimate relationship. You know, we understand that it was always represented. This is why it's so important when we talk about, uh, you know, the, this is why the kingdom um, marriages and the, 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 the stuff that Brother Stevenson does on Tuesdays is so important. You know, ensuring that our household can remain whole because we understand that if you are not if your relationship with your spouse isn't where it needs to be. Your prayers are being hindered, meaning your worship is being hindered. That means you in violation of verse 23, where it talks about if a man love me and he keeps my words. Because part of your words is to love your wife. And part of your word, words is to submit to your husband. Like that's part of the words. We don't have an opportunity to exclude that. I, I I don't know. I, when I was reading this, I just thought that this was just so these 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 verse 23 was so profound to me because, you know, it was it was it was the, the perfect conclusion, even though we know we have we still have to go to the cross. But this was Jesus perfect conclusion. And, my you know, just just, you know, reading that of telling us how it all works, you know, and it's as simple as if you just keep it as simple as loving me and keeping the words. You know, keeping 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 my words. Don't listen to what such and such is saying. You know, if such and such is saying something that's is, is in contrary to what these words say, then such and such is wrong. Keep my words. Don't keep his words. Keep my words. Don't keep her words. I thought that that was so profound. You know, and then in verse twenty four, he says, "He that loveth me, not 
keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. Man, I'm telling you, this is so beautiful because, again, Jesus, Jesus is letting us know that these things that he is saying, he's not saying them of his own. Everything that he's saying, I, I, I read, I, I said earlier that Jesus is the will of the Father. While he was here on, the, on, on earth, he, he is the will of the Father. Everything that the Father was trying to relay to us, it was being relayed to us through Jesus Christ. And, and this is why Jesus says that, um, that we are, that Jesus says that him and his father are one. This is why, um, for one, John 5, 7 says that, you know, there are three that bear records in heaven and they are one. And this is why that the comforter, what we have today, this is why when it, when you read in the truth and you, this is what you're sticking to and you're not allowing yourself to be influenced by outsiders. You know, you become one as well because you understand what God and, and Jesus is trying to reveal with us. At this time, I'm going to open up any um, questions or any comments. Any questions, any comments? No? All right. If not, uh, Sister Hernandez, would you mind reading uh, verses 26? And 26? Can you carry 26 and carry us home to 31. Oh, yes, bro. But a comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I, ha I have said unto you, peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you will rejoice because I said I go unto the Father. For my father is greater than I. I know I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, you might believe. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you for the prince of this world come and have nothing in me but that the world may know that I love the Father as the Father gave me commandment. Even so, I do. Arise, let us go hence. Amen. Thank you for that, sister. No ego in Jesus. <laughs> Zero ego in Jesus. It's, it, it's, just, it's just amazing because, you know, he, 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 he starts going, you know, talking about the comforter, you know, he's saying, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So now, again, we just we just uh, uh, went um, we just went back and, you know, we was reading how um, Jesus was saying uh, the, no, the apostles and they were they were saying, like, how do we know the way? And, you know, how, when would we know if we we haven't been shown? And Jesus is saying to them, don't worry about none of this. The comforter, he's saying the comforter will uh will will make sure that everything that I have told you it's going he's going to bring it to the forefront of your mind. He's saying that whatever you eat, the things that you may have forgotten that I taught you, the comforter will guide you to it. He's going to bring that thing to the forefront. He says he will teach you all things. And he said, and he will bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So don't worry about it. All these things that I'm saying to you now that you may forget about, don't worry about it. The comforter is going to bring it to your attention. He's going to bring it to the forefront. Then he goes in and he says, peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give unto you, not as the world giveth, Give I unto you, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Again, I love this part right here because, you know, Jesus is, what Jesus is doing is he's reassuring, he's reassuring them. You know, 
He's letting them know because he's told them again and again that he's getting ready to be with the father, that he's getting ready to leave them. And, and, and you know, he, you got to understand their position, right? You know, and, and I say that this way because, you know, I, I've, I've been in converse, I've been with people uh, and, 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 you know, we're talking about stuff and we'd be like, man, how, how could the apostles deny Jesus, you know, Peter denying Jesus three times and one doubting and all this stuff. He did all this miraculous stuff. And, you know, we always say, man, if I was there, man, I'll tell you right now, if I was there, man, I would be by Jesus' side. And, man, I would you, hey, no, you would be just like Peter. You would be just like Thomas. You'd be just like them doing the exact same stuff. Right. And, and, and you know, what Jesus is doing here is he's reassuring them because you got to understand they've witnessed this. I mean, he was on a boat with them sleeping. They were worried and crying and doing all these things. Master come, the boat is coming. We about to get swallowed up and he comes out and peace be still. You know, they seen all of that. He's walking on water. They, they witnessed him, uh, you know, turn, you know, one piece of loaf and, you know, some loaves and a couple fishes and just, you know, multiplying them. They seen him raise people from like they've witnessed all of this. And now you telling me you about to leave me. So, you know, they, 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 they a little like, oh, you know, they a little, they a little nervous. They're a little scared. You know, this is uncharted territory that they don't feel comfortable in. So that's why the, he said on them, you know, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. You know, I'm going to send somebody with you. And that person that's going to be with you, he, you know, he will bring all these things to your remembrance and he will be with you. And, 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 you know, you go into it, he's saying, it's not the peace of this world. Not as the world giveth, you know, you know, because, you know, the world promised you a lot of things. Uh, the world promised you a lot of stuff. And, you know, that's that's something that we have to understand today. You know, the world will promise us everything. The world will always tell us that they will be able to give us something that they can't really uh, produce. But what Jesus has um, given us, you know, uh, it, it can be produced. But like Brother Stephen says, you have to have faith. Right. None of us, none of us physically was here to witness any of these things. But but. Uh, we we believe and we have faith in and 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 the accounts of 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 these gospel writers um, that that they what they saw is is true and and we have faith in that and by us having faith in that that when when our time is uh, spent here on this earth and and as and as long as we're obedient to the word and we hold on to that word um, and and love God. Um, we will, you know, we'll have access and be able to, you know, see Jesus and 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 see Paul and everybody else who's in the kingdom. You know, verse 29, you know, and now I have told you before, it come to pass that when it come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father. And as the father gave me commandments, even so I do arise. Let's go from. So again, Jesus is just affirming them. I mean, this the, the language is so clear. You know, I, I just don't see how today people feel that we have the authority to even assume that Jesus is the father, have the authority to even assume. I mean, even I mean, he he, he will put he put himself in a position to say him and his father are one. You know, there's, you know, him and his father are equal, but he'll let you know, hey, my father's above me now. We equal because the things that I'm doing is according to his will, you know, it, it, it's, it's, but we, we equal now, but he's above me. I'm just want to let you know that let, 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 there's no doubt he is above me. So it, it gives us no right to even, you know, put our lips together to say something that he's not saying, which is crazy. I'll open it up for any um, questions or comments at this time. You can go ahead, Brother Coffee. I'll come behind you. Um, thank you, Brother Green. Just to, uh, to read the scripture that you were talk, speaking of on Brother Kennedy, uh, Philippians chapter number two and verse number six. And two things really come out of this, this, uh, this verse of scripture where it says, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. The fact that he's equal with God, and as you've been saying and teaching us all night, and when we get, went back to verse number 28 in John 14, it says, for my father is greater than I. But what I also see in, in, this, in this verse of scripture, in verse number two, in verse number, me, Philippians two and six, is what our brother's been teaching us all year long, is that Jesus is in the form of his father, which means that he had to have been created by the same image that he see his father in which is the same image that we are in. 
because he says that in Genesis chapter one and verse number 26. That's off topic, but I just want to share that because we have to tell it because that's what the scripture teaches. You, you know, I can't, okay, I, I'm a, I, I draw, but in order for me to, to create an image, I had to have seen it somewhere in order to, to copy what's in my mind. Uh, you know, sometimes it just becomes so simple, man. It just becomes almost frustrating to the point of laughter because as you've been sharing, how can you miss it? But again, like our brother said in Acts 16 and Luke 10, he just ain't going to show you who he is. That's just my comment. Um, coming behind you, Brother Coffee, and I just want to add a tidbit to what you were saying, going back to Philippians 2 and 6. Um, I think a lot of people get that word equal confused because they, they're thinking that it's the same as instead of similar to. And if you're similar to something, that doesn't make you the same as what it is you're similar to. And even when you look up the word equal in the context of that scripture, it says similar, not same as. So a lot of people look at that and say he's equal with God for those that believe that they both existed together the whole time. They don't realize that when he's equal to, you know, I just had a conversation with Brother Stevenson last night and, you know, a brother at the congregation came to me and said, Jesus wasn't born. And then he tried to go to 1 Timothy 1 and 17. And you see the word there, uh, King Eternal. And, and because he see the word King Eternal, that now, you know, they've always existed together. Not looking at the fact that when you look that word up, in that definition, it says, began with no ending. So Jesus began with no ending, you know, so, you know, I just wanted to touch on that real quick because that's why they can't see it because they have their own thoughts and idea of who God is, who Jesus is and so on and so forth, instead of allowing the scriptures to do the teaching as brother coffee always says. And, but I have a question though, going back to verse number 26, where it says, but the comforter, which is the Holy ghost, uh, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, this is my question because I was listening to uh, how you was teaching it, my brother. Is there something on our part we have to do in order for the comforter to bring those things to our remembrance? Because I'm looking at this and I'm thinking people might get the impression of uh, something miraculous, like even if you never studied the Bible, but just because you believe the Holy Ghost will bring something to your remembrance, but how can he bring something to your remembrance if you haven't did your part in studying it? Uh, so no. that's my question, brother. So uh, to me, We can't we can't hear you, Brother Kennedy. Oh, I, I was saying that um this is Jesus directly talking to his apostles. Um I know earlier I had said uh there's there was parts where you know some of the stuff is for us, where you can look at it as all believers, or some of the stuff was directly that he was talking to his 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 uh um his apostles. And here um he's talking to them directly. Um he says, But the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and will bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So he's telling them that everything that I have told you um, and then and if we can recall, you know, Jesus uh, um, in, in I think is what the end of Matthews and Acts chapter one. We read about how, you know, Jesus tells them um, in Jerusalem, don't leave, don't depart from Jerusalem and, and in Jerusalem, you will be endued. Um, from power from high and that's when the Holy Ghost came down to them in, in Acts chapter 2 and then they were able to uh, speak in tongues um, uh, so when I look at this as Jesus talking to them um, this is to me this is not Jesus uh, talking to us because uh, the comforter yes we when, once once we obey the gospel um, we we will uh, you know we have access to the Holy Spirit but it, it, we only get to the point of knowing and remembering based on how we study it. You can only, we, we can only know and remember based on how we study. Now the, the, the spirit will guide us to truth. Um, but it, it's not going to, uh, 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 do, uh, 
and, 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 and from a standpoint of to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. I don't I don't see that part. So, you know, Jesus is, is this is specifically speaking about what I have told you, the things that I have said, everything that I have been telling you. Don't worry about because remember what Jesus is doing here is he's reassuring them. Jesus has been reassuring them this entire time. They have been, you know, have been uh, worried about Jesus departure and trying to figure out how they are supposed to get to Jesus. Jesus, you know, I've told you the, you know, Jesus told them at one point, you know, you know, the way, and then, you know, they come and say, how do we know the way you haven't showed us the way we don't know what you're talking about. So again, this is, uh, uh, this is, um, speaking about, uh, uh, Jesus is speaking to them about the things that he has physically said to them and and the stuff that he has been teaching them, you know, over the past three years, all the, the things that he has been teaching them, all the lessons, all the parables, all the stuff that he's been. Remember, there's there's been times where where, uh, um, you know, after each parable, they were asked questions because they were uh, hungry for more and they wanted. And then there came times when he spoke to them in parable and they didn't ask no question because they was afraid. You know, so what did he do? He didn't tell them nothing. So Jesus is speaking directly to his uh, disciples, his his apostles, telling them the things that I've told you, the, you know, everything that I've been teaching. And, he, and he's got some more stuff to to teach them before they before before he depart. But he's just ensuring them, reassuring them that that you're not going to be comfortless. And the things that I'm teaching you, the comforter, he is going to guide you and he's going to bring to your remembrance because they got to understand now what to do with all this stuff that that he that they've been taught with. I hope that helped you. If somebody else got something to add. Yeah, can I add something to that too, uh, brother, uh, brother uh, Kennedy? Yeah. In Luke 21 and verse 14, Jesus is talking before his death, burial, and resurrection. He says, settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you're going to answer. I'm going to give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor to resist. And so he's he's showing us the signs of the end of the age and how he's going to give people what they need uh, to say and to answer at specific times. Now, remember, Paul told us in Ephesians 3, 4, when we read, uh, we can understand the mystery, you know, that uh, uh, has now been revealed to us. Let me read that. I don't want to just Ephesians 3, verbal, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. And so what we have today, brothers and sisters, is we have we have God's word. And again, God's word, the Bible, is not just written by apostles. Remember, uh, Luke wasn't an apostle. Uh, Mark wasn't an apostle. But these are gospel writers that God inspired to write that when we read them, inspired by the Holy Spirit, this is why we speak the oracles of God. And so, like Brother Kennedy is saying, you know, we don't have any miraculous gifts. Uh, that was Luke 21, for those asking, verse number 14 and verse number 15. Luke 21, 14 and verse 15. And so what the Holy Spirit has done is allowed men to write down what we hold in our hand and our laps. And when we study it and rightly divide it, we are, we are moved by it. And uh, this is what we use as our, our spiritual sword to thwart all false doctrine and to be able to to know who God and who who his and who his son is. You know, and so the simplicity in Christ, brothers and sisters, is where the fight is. The fight is if the devil knows he can destroy Christ, then we know we can't get to the father. You got to you can't list out on the definite articles that Jesus put in front of John 14. I am the way. That's a definite article. The the truth. And the life, definite articles. And so that means there is no other way. There is no other life. There is no other truth. So if the devil can destroy Jesus in our heart by preaching another Jesus, a Jesus without a God, I'm going to say this, Jesus had a God. I want to make sure everybody get that. Jesus has a God. This is why he has to ask God to send a comforter. He's got to ask God to send the comforter because he understands there is one greater than I. I have a God, and he is my father, okay? And so, yeah, so when we read, we're reading from the Holy Spirit, and we're reading what God had them to write down for you and I to be able to do spiritual battle. Amen. Brother Black? No, I just wanted to piggyback it. I mean, it's very clear that there's a difference between God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. I mean, there's, there's, that's not a question behind that. I don't know who would probably 
I guess I don't speak enough Bible with people who 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 say that Jesus is God. Um, however, uh, and and it says it here too. He just he he says the Father is greater than I am. So I, I'm coming back to you. Um, if you love me, you will be glad that I'm gone, so the uh I can go see the Father, and the Father is greater than I am. Uh, but he also mentions my question is it says Prince of the Prince of this world is coming. Is he referring to the Holy Spirit? Satan. He's referring uh, the, uh, to Satan. Yeah. The Satan is is described as the he's described as the God of this world, and he's described as the prince of this world. But, uh, which is why it follows up and says he he has no hold on me. Uh, right. or, okay, cool. Yep. You right on it. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Thank yeah, you. remember, look, Satan thought that Jesus dying on the cross was his victory, you know, um, and, and it wasn't. <laughs> um, and that's why that was the that was the the purpose. That's why we that's why we say if if Jesus never resurrected, then what we doing on this Zoom call would have been for nothing. We would just be in here just reading a book, just like you can go to Barnes and Nobles and 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 get you a nice little book, and we can have a nice little book club and be reading a nice book. That's what it'll be. If Jesus never resurrected, but because he did, you know, it, it, it increases our faith and 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 it reassures us uh, of everything else that he spoke about, you know, and and, and we all want to have access to that kingdom. Um, so that's why we have to um, hold to his unchanging hand. Um, Brother Kennedy, can I say something? on that's, You just made a powerful statement, bro. This would be a ahead. book club. But the, 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 that's what Christianity hinges its doors on, brothers. This is the resurrection. That's what makes us different than any other religion. Everybody else's religion and God is dead. They serve a dead God. Christianity's doors hinges on the resurrection. It was the resurrection that caused them to stand up. Oh, we know he's the son of God now. Even though they had to have more evidence, man, he rose. I mean, why would these men have to, all of a sudden they start preaching to God now getting beat for it, that something they were scared of at first? The resurrection. Resurrection is what gives us power. Jesus resurrected. We're going to be resurrected. We're going to see the Father. We ought to be the most excited people on this earth. And I'm telling you, it's amazing to me how the non-denominational world who don't know the truth, who don't have the truth, they seem like they got more zeal, a uh, 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 more spark, more fervency than we have a lot of times. And I'm not saying you got to act a fool, but my goodness, do you all know how blessed we really are? to know Jesus and go into the Father and have the Spirit dwelling with us. Brothers and sisters, let's not take it for granted, man. We got to have some excitement, man. Amen. Javier, Brother Javier. Great teaching, my brothers. Uh, God bless you, brothers. The comments with Kennedy as well. I just wanted to read a scripture uh, that can maybe add to the lesson in uh, Hebrews 1, verse 8. Uh, but unto the Son, he said, Thy throne, O God, is uh, forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter, uh, a scepter of thy kingdom. And so when you look at well, what he's describing, a supreme deity, uh, divinity, when you look at what Jesus has done, let us make man in our image with the Father, right? Genesis. Who can create spirits? You know, there's a lot of people that can create, make cars out of what they find on earth, metal. Uh, they can carve things out of wood, chairs that you can sit on. But the power to create a spirit where the Father communicates with the Son, the Holy Ghost, let us make man in our image. Who else can do that? The angels cannot do that. Uh, no man can do that. It can uh, have sex and a child is formed. In the womb, but it's God that's making the flesh and giving the spirit, making the spirit and the flesh. Uh, but they cannot, with their own power, uh, make a spirit. And, you know, when it comes to how the language between the father and the son is, if the world doesn't understand the language on how their relationship is, how they communicate, uh, how they are in the heavens, and how that structure is with the father, the son, Holy Ghost, how that structure is set up. When it comes to the subjection, the son being subject to the father, if they don't understand that when God calls the son, thy throne, O God, it's because he sees his son from the same uh, from the same entity that comes from him. 
he can create like him. He can create a spirit like him. He's deity as he is, the Godhead. So a lot of people, they in their mind, they they have this mindset concerning uh, the images of whether Egypt or India when it comes to these false gods, uh, when it comes to the gods they had in the time of Paul and Barnabas, uh, Jupiter, you know, Mercury. And they have to look at what the Holy Spirit wrote down on these pages to look at the true and living God, Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, and to see the story of how God and the Son are related and how they have a relationship. And so they are teaching us through scriptures how we can have a relationship with them. But again, a lot of souls are getting caught up with man te man's teaching on this subject. And then they're, they're twisting things left and right. And then they're failing to see the truth. And then when they fail to see the truth, they can't begin to get a relationship with God or it's cut off because they, then they fail to see um, how the father and the son are connected. So I'll just, just wanted to say that my brother, I'll toss it back to you. Hey man, appreciate you. Appreciate that preacher. Brother coffee. Yeah, real quick, when actually my brother Javier was speaking, when he's speaking about um, how and who can create spirits, you know, when we go back to Genesis chapter number two, when the Bible says that man was created from the dust of the ground, it doesn't say that he created uh, lungs and all these organs and all these veins and arteries and, and all this kind of stuff. And it's just like when you think of the magnitude of his power, it's absolutely mind, it, you can't even, it's mind boggling. Because if you can, God has the power to, uh, what is it, to create whatever it is that he speaks. But then you have, you know, foolishness being said, but I'm going to speak something into existence. You know, the, these, these religious minded folks here on earth. And it just goes to show you how, delusional you know man has become to think that they can speak something in this isn't all because you know they they are we what you have taught us tonight about it, anything you ask in my name you know he'll he'll give it to us but there are a lot of things i wish i could speak in it's into existence and they just simply just go away you know what i mean but it's just i just thank god that that I can learn from you brothers and study and get some of this understanding as it tells us in Proverbs 4, 7. It's a beautiful thing. And like you said, brother, we should be thankful just to be in, in God's kingdom because it's scary if we're not, now that we know the repercussions of not obeying the gospel is my comment. Amen. Amen. Whew. It's powerful stuff. Great comments from everyone. <laughs> Great comments from everyone. Uh, Brother Green, if there's no more uh, questions or comments, I'm going to turn it over to Brother Green. Thank you, brother. Wonderful lesson and great teaching. I know that it's, it's been uh, just, you know, the time is far spent, so I'm going to try to get through this as quick as possible. Uh, just a reminder, everyone, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, our Kingdom Family Marriages uh, kingdom families and kingdom marriages study will be on brother Stevenson. There's been a change in the time. So it's no longer seven 30. It's at 7 PM. So anyone that you know that you invite, make sure you let them know that there's been a, a time and a, a change in the time on that study. Uh, with that being said, uh, quickly, is there anybody has any questions, any comments? All right, is there anybody that has any prayer requests before we sign out? Hey, Brother Green, what was that? What, what date was that for you? Um, on Tuesdays, where we do our Kingdom Families, Kingdom Marriages, it'll now be at 7 p.m. instead of 7.30 on Tuesdays so on Brother Stevenson's Zoom page. It's 7 p.m. instead of 7.30. All right. And, uh, is there any prayer request before we sign out? So pray for me, please. Okay, Brother Crosby is requesting prayer. He's not feeling well, so ask uh, you all to pray for that brother. Anyone else? Yeah, uh, go ahead, I, want God. I just want to thank God. We made it back from a vacation trip, so thank God for guiding us back. 
Uh, most definitely, my brother. Do we have anyone else? All right. If not, Brother Joyce, if you don't mind, my brother, could you please close us out with a word of prayer? Hey, Brother Green, did want to say this. We have Timothy James. Uh, he's here and listening in on the Zoom. He obeyed the gospel on yesterday. And so he's here at the, at the house. And I just want you all to keep him in prayer. He'll be on the road to travel tomorrow. He's a truck driver. And, and uh, just thank God for his obedience to the gospel. Brother Timothy James, just keep him in prayer for us. Thank you. Amen. Brother Joyce. Amen. Shall we pray? Our God and our Father, we just thank you for this night. We thank you for this study. We thank you for all who participated in tonight, had a mind to want to come and get grow stronger through your word and get more knowledge of your word that we may be able to do your will as you have commanded us to do. Uh, we thank you for our teacher tonight, Brother Kennedy. We thank you for blessing him uh, with knowledge and understanding to rightly divide the word of truth. Uh, let us take this word, God, and continue to apply it to our lives and, and to know the truth. And we know that you said in your word, we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. We thank you for uh, Brother Cos Crosby tonight. We ask you to uh, heal his body and whatever is ailing him. Uh, we know you know all about him. We know that you're able to heal. And we know you have the power to do it. So we lift him up to you tonight, as well as our brother Timothy, who obeyed the gospel. We thank you, God, for his life and his decision. Uh, we ask you to go with him and that he continue uh, to be uh, steadfast in the faith. We know this is the beginning. We want him to know that we are praying for him, Lord. We are lifting him up to you as well, uh, that he continues to grow stronger uh, as a faithful saint in the Lord, as well as all of us that are here. Continue, God, to bless all of us, that we continue to be faithful and grow stronger. Uh, we realize, God, that this race is not given to the swift and strong with him that endures all the way until the end. Uh, if there's uh, any uh, thing that uh, may be in our lives that's not pleasing to your sight, we ask you to make us aware, <clears throat> God, that we may repent, and God, that we may uh, ask you to forgive us for all of our sins and our shortcomings, that again, God, that our fellowship not be broken with you. And God, even as we uh, depart from this Zoom study tonight and go our many different directions, uh, we ask you to continue to lead us and guide us as we just understood in the scripture that you say you would not leave us comfortless, but we ask you to ask your spirit to continue to lead us and guide us in all things. And we thank you now, and we give you praise now, and as we lay here at the pillow tonight, we ask you to let your angels protect us, rise us up in the morning, that we may go out uh, and let everything that we do, let us let leave you out of any decision that we make, any direction that we choose to take. We, we will put you first in everything that we do. We will be so mindful to give you glory and give you praise for that. We just thank you now. We ask us all in your son Jesus' name. We do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Jay. Amen. Thank you for that wonderful prayer, Brother Joyce. And in closing, as always, brothers and sisters, may God continue to bless and keep each and every one of you. Love you all dearly with the love of Christ. Until we meet again, if it be the Lord's will, good night. God right. bless and continue to fight the good fight of faith. Don't forget to call me, Brother Stevenson. Okay. Great job, Brother Kennedy. Great God job, Brother Kennedy. Kennedy. God bless you, Brother Gray.